<clears throat> well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, A Friendly Edmonton's Lunch and Learn on Jaren Technology. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Caroline G, and I'm your host today, along with Angela Keller, uh, who is providing some very, very valuable uh, tech support. This event is brought to you by Age Friendly Edmonton um, and is an initiative of the Edmonton Seniors Coordinating Council supported by the City of Edmonton. Age Friendly Edmonton is part of a global movement to build age friendly cities and communities and a city that recognizes the diverse populations and needs of seniors and actively supports their inclusion, engagement, and well being. We want to now honor those who came before us. We respectfully uh, acknowledge that Age-Friendly Edmonton is in Treaty 6 territory and on the traditional lands of the Cree, Blackfoot, Iroquois, Dene, Nakota Sioux, Métis, Saltu, Anoshibi, Ojibwe nations. We acknowledge and respect the past, present and future generations of all First Nations, Inuit and Métis people who continue to strengthen Edmonton and Canada. Next, we have a few housekeeping items. The presentation that you will hear today is pre recorded. Our presenter, Sheena, will join us live for the QA immediately after the video presentation. If you have comments or questions as they come to mind, feel free to type them in the chat. We will do our very best to answer them at the end of the presentation during our live Q&A as time allows. Our presentation today is just under an hour. Uh, please keep muted uh, while the presentation is being played. You can also view this presentation later on ESCC's uh, YouTube channel. And uh, I will ask uh, my tech support, uh, Angela, to put the chat or put the uh, link in the, uh, in the chat for everyone. So now it's my pleasure. Uh, to introduce you to our presenter today. Uh, Sheena Jaffer is member of our AFE leadership table for the past four years and has a great passion and keen interest in the area of assistive technology. I've learned so much from her. Over the past 10 years, uh, Sheena has been largely working in the field of aging with a specific focus on aging in place and assistive technology. Now I would like to uh, ask Angela to play Sheena's presentation. Hello everyone. My name is Sheena Jaffer. Over the last decade, I have been largely working in the field of aging with a specific focus on assistive technology, gerund technology, aging in place and the age friendly movement. My knowledge and passion for enabling technologies, age tech products and solutions has been greatly enhanced through my work, but also through research that I undertook for an aging program completed at Johns Hopkins University. What this research unveiled was fascinating and exposed me to cutting edge innovations and emerging technologies being regularly introduced to market. Through all this work, I have continued to learn and witness that for almost every functional limitation, there is already an enabling technology that lends an empowering remedy. This exciting exposure to the world of assistive and gerund technology has fueled my passion to keep learning more and more about how the rapidly evolving and enabling GERN technologies are fundamentally transforming modern society and the way we live and what may be the future of aging with technology. Artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, and rapidly emerging technologies are definitely disrupting everything from healthcare to communication to transportation and are just a glimpse of how the future of aging is unfolding. As gerund technology advances at an ever faster rate, 
New breakthroughs are continuously emerging and are being applied in innovative and powerful new ways. New technologies hold promise for support and beneficial outcomes in the quality of life of older adults. However, we must understand that technology alone does not ensure positive results. How every individual uses and applies technology to living and learning is really a personal journey. So the title of our presentation today is Gerund Technology, an enabler towards independence, safety, security, and quality of life. For this presentation, the learning objectives are to provide an understanding of gerund technology and the needs of a growing aging population's preference to remain safe independent and aging place. Secondly, it is to enhance the understanding and scope of today's gerund technology marketplace. And finally, we will explore some emerging gerund technologies and the future of aging proactively. So what is gerund technology? It is the study of aging and technology for ensuring good health, social participation, and independent living through the lifespan. The purpose of all innovative and new gerund technology in this space is to serve as an enabling role for aging adults by supporting and maintaining independence, supplementing well-being and health, promoting cognitive and memory health, complementing individual and collective social obligations and needs, staying abreast of the changing environment, connecting socially and communicating, enhancing dignity, and it is also there to support caregivers. On this slide, we have a quote from the gerund technologies, which states, increasingly we are seeing technology designed with older adults in mind. This doesn't mean big buttons and loud audio. It means putting older adults at the center of the design process and aiming to meet their needs and aspirations. Basically, it is apparent that older adults want to be engaged in relation to their needs. And many of us who have been working with them have heard it loud and clear. Nothing for us without us. I believe it's fair to say the fastest growing situational disability is aging. Age-related changes can and do affect a person's visual, sensual, motor, and cognitive abilities. And according to this poster, the range of sight begins declining at age 40. Muscles, all of us lose muscles around age 40. Hearing loss starts accelerating at age 60. And cognitive decline decline accelerates around age 70. As we grow older, the prevalence of physical, cognitive, and sensory changes increases. Adding to this challenge, the trends indicate that as the percentage of the aged is increasing in the world, the percentage of health, home care workers, and family support systems appears to be declining. And to complicate this even further, we are now detecting an increase in chronic and non-communicable diseases. As indicated on this poster, about 80% of older adults have at least one chronic disease and 68% have at least two. Chronic diseases can affect a person's ability to perform important activities 
restricting their engagement in daily activities. Addressing chronic diseases requires new strategies to delay health deterioration, improve function, and address problems that confront, people confront in their daily lives. Despite increased longevity, in recent statistics tell us that 90% of Canadians age 65 and over live with at least one chronic disease or condition such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, respiratory conditions, diabetes, dementia, arthritis, or obesity. With chronic health conditions requiring prudent focus, Geron technology and other assistive technology can be helpful. For example, it can support safe mobility for persons with chronic respiratory diseases. It can help maintain independence in daily living for those living with cancer. It can improve mobility, cognition, and support communication for stroke patients, can assist to prevent ulcers, and can help manage mobility and vision loss for those living with diabetes. A few years ago, visitors to the IBM Cognitive Studio took a survey. Almost 50% indicated that they worry most about losing their memory and suffering from dementia as they get older. 35% believe that discussing long-term care is a difficult discussion to have with their parents. And one in three or 33% believe that smart homes and Internet of Things will help manage the aging process the most. And based on my many interactions with older adults, I can attest to hearing similar sentiments. Aging in place. Why aging in place? I'm sure many of you may be familiar with this term. So what do we mean when we say aging in place? According to the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, aging in, aging in place is the ability to live in the same home or community where you have always lived safely, independently, and comfortably as you age. Many continue to live in the same home for decades and do not wish to uproot when they are getting older or when their needs may be changing. Surveys and studies by various researchers and organizations focused on aging consistently find that the vast majority of older adults, almost 90%, want to remain in their own homes and communities rather than move to a retirement community or any other continuing care facility. Findings reveal that as the baby boomer generation enters the retirement phase with potentially better longevity, they wish to live independently and remain socially connected as long as possible. With a longer life expectancy, perhaps shrinking assets and the high cost of continuing care facilities may limit options for older adults in later life. Therefore, those who may need support and care are likely to receive it in their own home. However, another trend and a key challenge is that as the demand for home care is increasing, the availability of home care workers is sharply declining. And so a lot of the innovations and technology are intended to help bridge the, the, the care divide. In relation to successful aging in place and maintaining independence, much of past research has focused on the importance of activities of daily living and the, and the instrumental activities of daily living, such as eating, dressing, bathing, driving, preparing meals, or administering medication. However, Scientific findings are showing that the engagement in enhanced activities of daily living are also critical for quality of life 
and positive health outcomes. Enhanced activities such as socializing, hobbies, entertainment, recreation, volunteering, and travel are proving to contribute towards better quality of life and well being. The extent to which a person participates in the community, society, and develops meaningful relationships through these activities, interactions, and exchange of ideas and useful information has gained popularity and is playing an important role for among older adults to stay mentally, physically, and socially active. Studies are showing that higher levels of social engagement are also contributing to reduced levels of hypertension, decreased development of dementia, increased mental health and psychological well-being, and it reduces mortality rates. On several fronts, adoption of key technologies by those in the oldest age group has grown significantly since about a decade ago. Studies show that 78% of older Canadians are confident in using technology. Three in four believe technology can help them in numerous ways. And just in the last decade, there has been a substantial increase in smartphone usership and overall technology adoption, which clearly implies that older adults are very comfortable to embrace technology and particularly digital devices. And as you will note on this slide, for the first time, nearly 60% of the world is using the internet and the internet is now considered a necessity. Considering the age wave that is emerging and which keeps growing, I believe, Gerund technology has great potential in proactively ensuring health and wellness, safety, social participation, and independent living. For the purpose of this presentation, we will focus on four broad gerund technology categories, safety and security, health and wellness, social connectedness and communication, longevity and life learning platforms. Safety and security technologies include devices such as personal emergency response systems, fall detection and prevention, environmental monitoring, such as temperature, carbon monoxide, flood, smoke, or fire alarms, sensor technology, wander management, uh, and stove shut-off systems. Let's have a look at a few examples in this category. GPS shoe inserts can support and provide peace of mind for family members and those caring for persons suffering from memory impairment and wandering, which can be caused by Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, traumatic brain injury, or other cognitive memory disability. Using sensor technology, GPS smart soles are designed to provide discrete monitoring. These ergonomic smart soles can slide into shoes like any regular insoles. The insoles include the free smart locat locator mobile app for access to the location of loved ones just at the touch of a button. Through the app, you can also get other customized alerts. Some of you may be familiar with the term smart home technology, which is commonly used these days. For those of you who may not be familiar, smart home technology refers to one or more of 
internet connected devices that can help someone control their environment and navigate everyday life activities by voice, movement, apps, or switches. Many of these devices can be automated and remotely controlled. Smart home technology is fast earning an important place in the assistive technology ecosystem. There are a variety of devices that can increase independence, productivity, safety, and health in your home. Older adults, as well as persons with dis disabilities, are using generic smart technology to control their environments, such as lights, fans, thermostats, to access entertainment, TV, music, monitor security, smart appliances, window coverings, and much more. Examples of devices that can be smart include speakers that can help you get organized, light bulbs that you can control with your voice, thermostats you can set remotely, plugs to control appliances through an app, TVs that stream from the internet, home appliances like microwaves that can be programmed for specific foods, doorbells that send an alert to your phone so you can speak with visitors, door locks you can program to control who enters your home, security systems you can manage remotely, health monitoring systems that track your vitals, and much more. The Internet of Things provides possibilities to utilize Wi-Fi on just about everything. So fridges, dishwashers, thermostats, smoke alarms, doorknobs, beds, toilets, and more. All these data points are intended to make the lives of those aging in place better. As we age, it is common to experience nat natural vision changes to, to depth perception, reading distances, resistance to glare, and even color perception. In a home, both personal and environmental factors can impact visual clarity. So it is a good idea to learn how proper lighting can help you with a number of age-related challenges. According to statistics, at age 40, you need 20 times more light to see at night than at age 20. Many challenges are related to the need for appropriate lighting that can reduce the risk of falls and better enable a wide range of activities to enhance a homeowner's quality of life. It is very important to include a, a variety of lighting sources that reduce glare and highlight elevation transitions, such as steps and thresholds between spaces. In areas of the home which face either east or west, the inclus inclusion of adjustable blinds can also reduce glare at specific times of the day. On this slide is an example of a guidebook entitled Lighting the Way that can assist you to select the right light fixtures and light bulbs to support aging in place and support challenges such as visual impairments, functional limitations, and structural hindrances. Let's now have a look at health and wellness technologies, which include a wide array of medication management and optimization systems, health status monitoring systems, telehealth and telemedicine systems, cognitive assessment technologies, dispensers and reminder systems, cognitive stimulation systems that focus on mental health and wellness, there are currently many options to help manage health and most are designed to prevent, monitor, manage the health and safety of individuals. In relation to the pandemic, the ultraviolet of, ultraviolet of things is gaining popularity. 
just as the internet of things saw the emergence of web connected devices, we are now seeing gadgets built in with disinfectant capacity, thanks to the ultraviolet technology. For example, water bottles with ultraviolet light caps that, that disinfect both the water and the container. In terms of health and wellness technologies, wearables have been very popular in the last few years. Smart wearables are electronic devices intended to be worn on the human body, a number of which also serve as full detection systems. Again, there has been a huge increase in multifunctioning wearable devices just in the last few years, including smart watches, smart glasses, fitness and wellness devices, smart clothing, and more, all of which are intended to serve for tracking and monitoring. Innovators in this space have been conscious about incorporating feedback from older adults. And so, Many of today's devices are smaller, some look like jewelry, and they are easier to remember to wear. Residents in some home retirement commu communities, for example, wear the sensors on a lanyard that also holds their ro room key. In this space, we also have smart clothing, which can communicate with other connected devices, such as smartphones and the wearer's body, and is designed to collect biometric and physical data, such as body temperature and heart rate, using a variety of sensors. The data is transferred to relevant apps where it can be viewed by authorized users. While wearables can be very effective, they must be used properly and consistently. As you will note on this slide, the growth of the wearable market signals popularity and is forecast to reach more than a billion by 2022. Tattoos like this one are offering simple and trendy health monitoring. Sensors injected into the skin can detect glucose levels UV light exposure and body temperature. Just imagine measuring your blood sugar by looking, just by looking at your arm. Medication management systems are one of the most important and widely used devices. Based on research, up to 50% of patients fail to adhere to their medications as prescribed. In addition, every year, thousands of people die through medication errors. These can include taking the wrong medication, taking an improper dosage, or even missing a round of meds altogether. Automatic pill dispensing systems can be instrumental in supporting caregivers and monitor their loved ones to take medications on time and to avoid errors. Medication management systems, which are designed with a variety of features, are intended to support and streamline the process of taking or administering medication. Today's automated pill dispensers can be sophisticated with several high-tech features that are highly useful for those with memory impairments and with specific and intricate medication regimens. Social connectedness and communication technologies. These include multimedia platforms, to keep connected with family, caregivers, grandchildren, and friends. Devices such as amplified large button and memory phones, simple to use cell phones, 
messaging and other communication modalities such as video reminders, video phones, and video conferencing systems, as well as voice technology are playing an important role in this space. Let's explore a few examples. Voice enabled digital technology has been a major area of growth in just a few short years. And voice interface is continuing to become an important segment of the digital ecosystem. For example, smart assistants like Amazon's Amazon's Alexa devices have been used to provide entertainment and social stimulation. Innovators have been talking about a future where voice technology is everywhere, on your wrist, in your home, on your furniture, as well as in your car. Interfaces such as keyboards will likely be less utilized in the future. And so the future points to the growth of the digital butler as voice technology becomes more and more pervasive in our lives. This means that interfaces powered by gestures, voice, gaze, and even brain activity will become more prevalent. Voice digital assistants are definitely evolving and are here to stay. Amazon's devices now offers Alexa Together, a subscription service designed to help aging loved ones feel more comfortable and confident to live independently. As an example, it offers loved ones remote assist to help set reminders, manage shopping lists, and other tasks. Another feature, the Alexa Care Hub, is useful for those caring for loved ones at a distance. In terms of social connectedness technologies, there are a number of platforms that have emerged just over the last decade. The example sh as shown on this slide is a LG TV-based platform, which embeds remote care with tools for social integration. By simply using a remote control, which most older adults can use with ease. Included in this are access to video calling, social media, so safety and wellness features, such as reminders for medication, appointments, and social engage en engagements. It also has the ability to interface with devices, such as glucometers and blood pressure monitoring devices, and can also serve as an emergency alert system or a door sensor. Given its popularity and increased usage over the last couple of years, I'm sure everyone here has become very familiar with Zoom. We are using Zoom as we speak. It's remarkable how this platform has been embraced by millions around the world in a relatively short span. Just in a couple of years, many of us that were not familiar with this technology prior to the pandemic have successfully surpassed this barrier and have become proficient in interacting through computer or tablet screens. I'm sure many of you have witnessed its usefulness, whether it's participation, participating in sessions with family and friends, socializing, or learning through formal presentations or educational events. To complement assistive technology, we now have an immeasurable explosion of apps in the iOS, Android, Windows, and other platforms. Each day, there seem to be innovations to accommodate aging at all fronts, including the probability of aging in place apps that are successfully evolving and offering innovative, exciting, and limitless possibilities. It seems there is now an app for almost everything. With millions of apps, it's hard to think of a function that has not been addressed. 
shopping, banking, gaming, and even medication reminders can all be accomplished through these apps, which may be particularly helpful to seniors, such as magnifier and reader apps, uh, ride share services such as Uber or Lyft, and grocery delivery apps. Longevity and lifelong learning platforms. We are all now witnessing extended human longevity as a reality all around the world. Societies in both industrialized and developing countries are seeing their populations get older and live longer. By 2030, in a few short years, nearly 1.4 billion people on earth will be age 65 and older. And these changing demographics are, are already transforming lives. How we meet the opportunities and challenges of longevity and how we embrace a holistic vision of lifelong learning from cradle to grave is really up to each one of us. Studies have shown that social interactions and mental stimulation have a profound impact on mental health and longevity. A number of lifelong learning platforms have emerged through Ivy League colleges and other in educational institutions that are offering a variety of courses with the goal of making lifelong learning a reality for one and all. So major universities, colleges are now offering a lot of free courses. There are also many opportunities for distant learning, upskilling, reskilling, and exploring new areas of interest. There are opportunities for gig work, freelancing, and consulting, and meeting the multi-generational moment. For the first time in history, there are more individuals over age 60 than under 18. We, have, we are now seeing more movements focused on bridging the generational divides in ways that address age segregation and promote the benefits of greater cross-generational engagement and interdependence. Social impact volunteering, the new map of life, and all the benefits that come with having pets in your homes. Another timely initiative, um, the new map of life, points us to shift from a deficit mindset that tends to focus on a decline associated with aging, whether in terms of health, mobility, financial security, independence, or social engagement, and instead to optimize each stage of life through economic and social contributions that one can continue to offer. The new map of life envisions new options for learning outside the, outside the confines of formal education, where people of all ages are able to acquire the knowledge they need at each stage of their lives, and to access it in ways that fit their interests, abilities, needs, schedules, and budgets. Today's marketplace offers thousands of devices, including low, medium, and high-tech interventions. In addition to reducing caregiver costs, these technologies have the capability of providing better care coordination and an enhanced sense of security, prolonged independence, and a better quality of life. For any functional decline along the aging dimension, there is already some technology that can be harnessed. Emerging trends and latest gerund technologies. As listed on this slide, there are a number of exciting trends, including artificial intelligence, 
virtual and augmented reality, internet of caring things, and robotics. There is already a wide range of cutting edge gerund technology and assistive technology devices and products that are available in today's marketplace. We are now living in times when many of the healthcare devices are connected to the cloud, which is referred to as the internet of caring things. So what is it? Imagine a home where hidden sensors in the walls can predict a fall before it happens, or the front door can be unlocked by someone who is immobilized upstairs, and a cop can call the ambulance if an elderly person is in severe danger. Experts say the Internet of Caring Things represents a revolution in how health and wellness is managed. Sensor technology is increasingly useful in mitigating fall risk, alerting about sleep issues, or whether a person has eaten and is particularly important in tracking trips to the bathroom, which has been useful in detecting urinary tract infections. Virtual reality or VR describes a three-dimensional computer-generated environment through which an individual can explore and interact and become immersed within this environment. VR is intended to stimulate our senses to create the illusion of reality. These devices have their own app stores, similar to the smartphone app stores, where you can browse and download, download games and apps. Some of these stores are accessed using the device itself, while others, such as digital game stores, can be browsed on your computer. With VR, you can now explore things and places from the comfort of your own home. As shown on this slide, the Japanese have adopted toilets as health monitors for a number of years. With embedded sensors, this type of a toilet is intended to measure the level of blood sugar excreted in the urine, the pulse rate, blood pressure, and body fat levels. This is another area that has been continuously evolving with newer ones that are adding voice interfaces as well. Also, there are smart toilets, which are fitted with technology that can detect a range of disease markers in stool and urine. Many scientists indicate that the future of healthcare is going to be in the home. And in this regards, the toilet is going to be an important medical device in our homes specifically designed to monitor health based on human waste contents, which could be instrumental for preventative care by identifying a health problem, such as a dietary or, or, or another disease prevention earlier than conventional medical checkups. And on an interesting note, these toilets are also offering features such as heated seats and motion sensing lids. If you are caring for a loved one from a distance, here is an example guide through which you can learn more about sensor technology. Social and personal assistant robots are intended to aid humans through social and personal interaction, which can include personal assistants, robots, robotic pets, and companions, some that are capable to understand and react to human emotion by analyzing expressions and voices. Based on studies, 
Some of them have been helpful in combating loneliness. There has been and continues to be a lot of innovation in this space. Just in the last decade, robots ranging from social companions to security guards to health aides, telepresence and much more are already widely in use. Artificial intelli intelligence, advanced robotics and other emerging technologies are disrupting everything from transportation to home health care. And these technologies, and as these technologies keep evolving, they are having far reaching impacts over our lives. One of the recent innovations in Hong Kong is a robot called Grace. By the way, all robots have a name. In a YouTube video, Grace says, and I quote, I can do all kinds of things for elderly people. I can visit with them and brighten their day with social stimulation, entertain and help guide exercise, do talk therapy, tech, take bio readings, help healthcare providers with assessing their health and deliver treatments. So needless to say, that is incredible. Shown on this slide is IBM's Mira, which is equipped with cameras to read facial expressions, sensors to capture vital signs, and speech recognition to know when to call for help. I had the opportunity to be at an event where this robot, Rudy, was unveiled in the US around 2017. On this slide, you will see the team that developed Rudy, which is another example of an elder care robot with a technology that can perform household tasks around the home, such as fetching a glass of water, assist with telecommunication cap capabilities, so doctors and family members can check in remotely. With arms, wheels, and a screen on its chest, it delivers medication reminders, it can call for help, and also provides social interaction and games to engage its users. And it will even dance with you. This helpful home cleaning robot named Aeolus has been built to handle household chores. Powered by artificial intelligence, it can help with a number of tasks, such as pick up items off the floor and tables and return them to their proper place, move chairs and other lightweight furniture. And it has a modular attachment that can grip to a vacuum cleaner or broom. It is designed to recognize thousands of items. So for example, if you lose your glasses, Aeolus could help you find them. And we also have robotic exoskeletons. The robotic exoskeleton shown on this slide is worn as an external skeleton to provide the user additional strength, including for walking. It is fitted with motors at key joints, the lower back, knees, elbows, and shoulders. The goal of these modern exoskeletons is to support people paralyzed by illness or spinal injury and to help them to stand and walk. In some rehab facilities and labs, lower body exoskeletons and exosuits are being used to improve walking ability in stroke patients, the elderly and young people with cerebral palsy or other disabilities. And another development is in this space is exoskeletons that are now wearable under clothing and some very specific for caregivers. The lady on this slide is using a standing wheelchair 
which can offer a number of health benefits and which helps to enhance convenience and independence. Standing can, prom can, can promote improved blood circulation throughout the whole body. And among a number of other benefits, these types of wheelchairs are aimed to support improved breathing function, as well as increase bone density and help prevent pressure ulcers. Passengers with limited mobility may now be able to navigate airports much more easily with these type of robotic electric wheelchairs. As shown on the slide, this is at an airport in Japan. Ankle replacement surgery using innovative 3D printing is proving to be a game changer for patients with advanced ankle osteoarthritis. 3D printing, 3D printing is being used to create a variety of assistive technology devices, including prosthetic ears and hands, portable wheelchair ramps, and even utensils such as fork holders and a number of other aids to daily living. The Consumer Electronics Show, which is held every year, is the largest event of its kind that showcases some of the latest innovations and technologies. On this slide are some of the technologies introduced at the January 22 event, which you may wish to explore further. In a recent survey, many older adults indicated that technologies powered by artificial intelligence are making an impact on their daily lives. From cybersecurity, home security, personal assistance to smart home devices, artificial intelligence is aiming to make life safer, perhaps easier, and much more satisfying. During this pandemic times, I feel many of you will agree that technology has played a key role and has definitely been instrumental in supporting activities that traditionally may have taken place in person and or outside the home. Technology has provided unique leisure experiences that enhance well-being related to social isolation and loneliness. To ensure technology acceptance by older adults, users and caregivers looking into options should take into consideration the impact and usefulness of the technology. Is it useful and is the device making the desired impact? Is the user comfortable with the operation of the device? And in terms of privacy and trust, does the user trust the device and the related privacy issues? Let's now look at a couple of scenarios, which I hope will provide you with an opportunity for decision-making, learning more, and problem-solving through these scenarios. We have Nuru, who is 76 years old. Nuru is recently widowed, has lived in the same home for the last 55 years with her husband. Both her daughters are married, and while one of them lives in the city, Nuru is hesitant to call upon her much, as she has three children and a full-time job. Nuru feels very lonely, and having severe arthritis in her hands and knees is more or less confined to the home. What gerund technologies would be supportive of her needs? And we have Kasu, who is 88 years old, has been divorced and living independently, independently for the last 30 years. He suffers from diabetes, has low vision, and an early onset of dementia. With his memory declining, he sometimes forgets to take his insulin and due to low vision can no longer drive. 
what gerent technologies would be supportive of his needs? So the rationale for this exercise is really to encourage you to evaluate your own individual needs. As you learn about Nuru and Kasu's respective circumstances, think about your own and what types of technologies could probably support you. And as you, as you learn about these technologies and go along, please do seek out professional support as you may need. An important thing to remember is that when it comes to acquiring and using gerent technology and assistive technology, one size does not fit all. Every person is unique, and therefore it is important to take your own personal and holistic needs into account. Through these scenarios, I'm hoping you will find it useful to map out your individual situation as to what may make a, an impactful difference for you. Empower yourself to learn more about the new and available technology, and then adopt what may positively contribute towards your personal quality of life. So yes, technology does not replace the human touch. All this technology can help you bridge the care divide, but it cannot replace the human touch. As human beings, we all yearn for the human touch. People need people. They need and want meaningful interactions that give structure to their lives and keep them organized. No technology, therefore, can take the place of human in interactions. Technology has shown to be an important tool to enhance the care and support of aging adults. And its purpose is really intended to supplement, not supplant, the care provided by humans. Given the rate at which technology is evolving, it is important for all stakeholders to stay abreast of the evolving gerent technology ecosystem and the trends that are making a positive impact. We have already learned that almost 90% of people aged 65 and over indicate they want to age in their own homes. However, less than 10% are using the technology available to them. And this is largely because the needed information about these technologies is really not available to them. Technology can be a promising solution. However, often older adults need to become more comfortable with the technology. There is a need to have more trainings and facilitate, facilitate more conversations to keep learning and enhance the comfort level. Ensuring the right technology is leveraged for the right reasons through a professional assessment is extremely important considering there are thousands of devices available in the marketplace. It is very important that you compare features and decide what may be best for you. And finally, um, sharing of information and knowledge about all these technologies is very important as well. We all need to be me messengers by, by sharing new information, tips, and success stories to help each other. On this slide, there are a few resources for you to keep learning more about different technologies. The future of germ technology and healthcare is rapidly evolving with advances in digital, digital healthcare technologies, artificial intel, intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, 
3D printing, robotics, nanotechnology, and much, much more. While not every device is for everyone, it is a good idea to familiarize ourselves with the latest developments in order to be aware and be able to leverage the appropriate technology for our own advantage. The future of our well being and healthcare lies to a great degree in better understanding technology, as we all may have to embrace emerging technology at some point simply to stay relevant in the coming years. A common sentiment we keep hearing over and over is that the majority want to grow older in our own homes, surrounded by our, our families and living a normal life. Te technology appears to be promising in how we can enable those wishing to age in place to accomplish this goal. New technologies keep evolving with the potential to offer beneficial outcomes and advancements in the quality of life. Our task is to face the future of aging with courage, to turn to technology with an open mind and to prepare for the changing world with as much knowledge as possible. So with that, let's be curious, let's be bold, and let's stay informed. Thank you so much for making the time to be here today. I hope you have taken away some useful insights. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um... Shana, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Um, we do have some time for questions and answers at this point. Uh, we have probably about uh, 12 minutes. Um, there was one question that maybe we can start out with, uh, but before we do that, I just want to let people know that um, if you do have any questions, that if you go down to your bottom bar, and click on reactions, then you can click on that and then raise your hand and I'll try and get to as many of the questions that you have today. If you have to leave, um, that's no problem. Um, you can, if you have, think of a question later, uh, please feel free to email us at uh, uh, agefriendly, um, all one word, agefriendly at seniorscouncil.net. I had put it in the, um, uh, in the in the chat earlier, uh, there was one question uh, that I had, and uh, I think Jackie put it in the uh, in the chat. Um, how can people facilitate technology adoption among older adults? Is that a loaded question? <laughs> and, well, it is. It is because I think, um, as I've stated in the presentation, uh, one of our greatest challenges is that the information that is happening out in the bigger world out there does not filter down to the household level. And uh, often people are fearful of using the technologies. So um, for that question, I would say that, yes, there is one strategy that I feel is working. And uh, in my work in the US in particular, uh, one thing that uh, we, we were considering or, or some others have been doing is called a longevity circle where everybody comes together it's like a, a tech buddy group that encourages each other to use technology and and i think that uh, one way to adopt these technologies is really to be comfortable to learn from others and 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 from others who don't threaten you in any way so this longevity circle can be something that we could also develop here in edmonton and which I have actually suggested at times uh, in our meetings with Age Friendly Edmonton, that um, you know this is where somebody could bring a piece of technology and have people actually see it, feel it, um, be able to learn from seeing someone use it right, right in front of them. So um, that's that's one one I think one example of what we can do, but. Uh, I think we cannot say anything is impossible. We just have to find ways of doing this because technologies is definitely an integral part of us in today's day and age. 
Excellent answer. Thank you very much, Sheena. Um, there's another question uh, in the chat. Um, could you give more information on technologies for monitoring falls by those living alone with some information on costs? Right. So there is a there is there is a wide range of technologies in this area, and uh, obviously I cannot cover everything um, in this session here. But what uh, what perhaps we can do is. Uh, list down a number of different technologies and then share that list with people or put it on our website. Or I could also put it on this uh, resource that I've created called uh, Jiren Technology Guru, which is a wakelet, which has different resources on them. So with terms, in terms of fall prevention or fall detection devices, I mean, I talked about wearables in my presentation. I mean, many people are using smart watches they're using smart pendants. And uh, there are also many now remote patient monitoring systems. So there is a variety of different ones and they cost different amounts. So they can be as cheap as um, maybe a few hundred dollars to maybe some that are a thousand dollars. But like with any technology, I would say that you really have to assess the person's actual needs and then figure out what will best work for that person. So it's kind of hard to say, what you should do. Uh, I think it's important that the person be assessed and then the best device be recommended for them. All right, uh, excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Sina. Um, there is another question in the chat. Um, please suggest one tech device for an older person with heart disease. All right. Um, so there, there, there are again, um, you know, the um, heart rate monitors and, and different devices that perhaps could be used um, uh, in this case. I would say that, um, you know, the, the person should either talk to their physician or talk to their, um, an occupational therapist or someone in there that can recommend the best thing for them. I, again, I'm not, I'm not a medical um, professional um, but I would say that there are definitely oximeters in different, different devices out there that can probably be used in their circumstances. All right, excellent answer. Thank you very much, Sheena. Um, I'm just looking to see if anybody else, uh, there's any hands up at this point. Um, I don't see anything and I don't see anything in the chat. Um, what I'd like to say is there are just a, a ton of resources and uh, thank you so much uh, to Jackie Eels who has joined uh, in the chat and she's put in, uh, put, put in a lot of links in there. So I'll try and gather up those links as well and uh, send the links and some resources out um, when I send out the feedback forms uh, probably tomorrow for you to, to fill out. So uh, that way you have the information and you don't have to madly write down all of those links. Um, I do have one other question, Sheena. Um, actually, it's a personal question here. Um, I, I guess they're all kind of personal. Um, if I could get my dad to learn one new technology, which one would make the biggest difference to their well-being? Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, I think, you know, um, I have older adults in the family and uh, one thing that I've introduced to them is a tablet. So either uh, an iPad or something similar that also plays the role of different assistive technologies in its own way because you can download so many different apps. So I would say that if you don't have a tablet, that would be a really, really good um, device to have because it can, it can, you can do a lot with it. But um, you know, in this day and age, uh, I also mentioned in the presentation, the, the voice technology and how it's going to be everywhere. So I think if you don't have a, a voice device in your home, that would be another thing that you could possibly consider and learn how to use it because I think it can be very, fairly useful. Um, I use it myself and I think uh, it does a lot of good things for me. I think there's always the question of privacy and trust with them, but uh, I think we, we're we living in a digital age where we have to try and embrace things that work for us. So um, again, one size doesn't fit all for everyone. So you really have to know what you want, 
and whether you are going to use it um, and maximize its usefulness. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. That's a great answer um, and very helpful as well. Um, actually, we have time for, if you don't mind, one more question. Um, I think often older adults are provided with some new technology and they're left to learn it on their own without adequate, adequate support. Um, what steps are needed in your opinion to support technology adoption? So um, again, as I mentioned earlier, I think, um, you know, it's not just older adults. I think even some younger people have frustrations sometimes with using technology. The whole idea is that, um, you know, a lot of the technology now for older adults is being created in, in a way that is user friendly, that it's, um, there's, again, the functionality and uh, usefulness uh, is, is being made um, more easier because uh, well, some older adults are participating in the co-design of these um, technologies. But uh, I would say that for, for technology, you have to find yourself a tech buddy who, who you can go to, your go-to person who can assist you. Um, I realize this is a gap in, a, in perhaps in a city like Edmonton or even in all of Canada, where we don't have a place where seniors can go and learn more about how to use their technology effectively. So, you know, with my work in the US, there are, there are places like there is a senior planet, um, there are old days, old, older adults technology services where people can go and learn about technology for free. And, uh, and so perhaps this is something that we can dream about and make happen here in Canada as well. Um, having a place where people can go um, specifically to learn about different technologies and how to use them more effectively and to their advantage. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Sheena. Um, I think we have time. Um, we'll squeeze in one more question if you don't mind. Um, uh, do you know if there is any government legislation or incentives that are being worked on to mitigate the cost of, of acquiring these technologies? So um, there, there, there are some programs with the government, so with a, with a, you know different provinces. There are some. So I think the best place to go is to your um, your seniors portfolio and, and ask them what there is. But there's also a lot of nonprofit organizations such as Mar March, Mar um, March of Dimes or Red Cross. Um, and uh, there's, uh, there's a few others like Lions Club that, that actually do um, provide uh, subsidies with respect to uh, these technologies. So there are government programs, but again, uh, I've, I've, as I've mentioned, I, my work has largely been in the US and in the US, there is a lot more support in terms of government programs. And um, this is another area I feel that um, Canada needs to adopt and uh, you know, make happen here as well, because as we live longer and uh, as we you know, uh, rely on technology, we are going to need uh, different types of support. And I think we, we need to keep thinking on how we can be more innovative and more supportive of our aging population. So I guess I should unmute myself. Uh, thank you for that answer. That's, uh, that's terrific. And as long as we have people like you, Sheena, um, uh, working towards, um, people adopting technology and with your passion I think anything is possible uh, here in Edmonton. Um, so thank you Sheena. Um, Jackie I'm just going to let you unmute yourself to ask your question and uh, that'll be the last question that we'll have before we end our session today. Go ahead Jackie. Thanks, Sheena, for a very informative uh, presentation. There was lots and lots of information um, there to um, sort of process and digest and, and figure out what technology solutions may be helpful um, to me as a caregiver, to my mom, um, who is an older adult, um, and other people in my lives um, who are um, growing older and aging in their own homes. Um, I'm curious uh, from the participants' perspectives, 
Um, what is one thing that you would like to, to learn more about uh, related to Jaren technology? Um, so Sheena and I are part of Age Friendly Edmonton, um, and you know the whole purpose of Age Friendly Edmonton is to make Edmonton a great place to, to thrive as an older person. And so we're really interested in hearing um, from people in this audience, um, what, what more can we do? What more would you like to learn about um, uh, program services, information, that kind of thing? So either unmute yourself and say your comments or put them in the chat box. And um, and I would also add, thank you so much for that, Jackie. That's that's very important because you know we really want to be of service uh, to people and to be able to um, provide information that there is a, there's really a, a need for out there. Um, so um, one thing I would add is that in in case you cannot think of anything right now, uh, please feel free to email us as well at the email address that uh, Carolyn has provided. All right, good, excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Jackie, for that. And, uh, and Sheena for a wonderful presentation and answering uh, some of our questions today. I think uh, like again, um, there's so much to be learned in this area. It's a continuous process and uh, technology changes so fast. I have problems keeping up with, with the changes that happen in technology. There's a new app for this and there's something new for this. And, and uh, so it is very difficult to, to keep up with it. And uh, so we're working towards uh, making uh, Edmonton more age friendly and to, and this is I think one area that we certainly need to work on and to progress in that area. So again, feel free to email us with your additional comments and, uh, and your, um, uh, your, your thoughts on the question that Jackie just asked. Uh, so I'd like to just finish off our presentation now. Um, I'm just gonna uh, just share my screen one more time and um, just give me a second here and uh, Okay, here we go. Our next age friendly Edmonton Lunch and Learn is Wednesday, April 19th from noon to 1pm and the title of this presentation is ageism in the workplace, it will be a panel discussion uh, on the uh, on the 19th and uh, please look for more information on ESC's, uh, ESCC's website if you get our link letter. Um, you can, um, it'll be promoted in the April newsletter and follow us on social media or go to our, our website at seniorscouncil.net uh, slash lunch and learns and hope uh, we'll see you at that next lunch and learn. And again, um, if you have any questions, I often will think of other things to ask after the fact, uh, please email us again at hfriendly at seniorscouncil.net. A short survey about this event will also be sent out uh, with some of the additional resources and links that uh, Sheena provided and uh, Jackie provided in the chat. So you'll have all that information at your fingertips. So thank you once again for joining us and uh, have a wonderful day.